success, achievement, challenge, guts, glamour are just a few attributes of my guest tonight. She has shaped the image of a new Indian woman and spawned a generation of would-be's and wannabes. Created in India, crowned by the universe, she is Sushmita Sen, a 90s phenomenon. I wonder, is she a creation of the times or one of its architects? We've never met before, and I'm eager to meet Sushmita tonight with her special friend, the rising young filmmaker, Vikram Bhatt. The world is rushing by so fast. Let's press the pause and make it last. We finally meet for the first time, <laughs> Sushmita. Yes. I'm delighted to have you here. Thank you so much. It's the same feeling here. Thank you. I always wanted to ask you that night, I mean, the night, did you make any private deal with God? Please, <laughs> if you give me this, I'll do that. Did you, did you do anything like that? I remember backstage, I was listening to Deep Forest on my Walkman, okay. all the shows on here. Yeah. And I remember saying to myself, God, this is it. This is my moment in time. Either I make it or I don't make it. And if I do make it, God, I promise you that I'll utilize it for the, to the best of my ability. And that I will not misuse it ever, that I will never be bad to people, that I'll never do this. And I'm trying to like bribe him every which way. And then it was like a God voice inside my mind and that said, that instead of praying to me, just go up there and be honest to yourself and say what you want to with all the confidence you got. Because if you go wrong this one time, you'll regret it for the rest of There'll your life. There'll never be another. There'll never be another. And the next thing I knew, I'd won. It, I can imagine, must have been a high like nothing else. But it came with an expiry date. Yes, it did. Yes, were, it did. were you aware of the clock taking away, the calendar moving on? And then after this, what next? At that moment, I never thought of what next. But yes, I definitely um, knew that it had an expiry date. Because I remember the minute I was crowned, the second I was crowned, Diana Torres, Miss Puerto Rico, who was Miss Universe before me, suddenly the spotlight moved away from her. And suddenly, everything was on me. Mm -hmm. And till that second, she was reigning the universe, crowned, you know. And just, just that one second, and she was no longer there. And, you and I realized that. I realized that very clearly, because right in front of me, they, they walked around the stage. And I knew that would happen one day to me. But I said to myself, what the heck? I'm here now. And let me enjoy it to the best I can and do the mo make the most of it. And you must have felt a vacuum after all that. Yes, I definitely did. I definitely did. You know, when an 18-year-old girl gets everything she wants and she's dreamt of, and suddenly one day it's all over, you feel like, wow, what am I supposed to do next, you know? So how did you deal with it? After that one year, I think about six months, I was in a complete dilemma. Mm -hmm. I was going through a transition mm -hmm. phase. You have to go through that mm -hmm. to come into something else. And I told myself to me, I said, I cannot consider this the end of the world for me, you see? Mm -hmm. Because I had worked five years of my life very hard to be famous to be a somebody. And I didn't want to give it up. I, I, did, I just didn't want to be an ex Miss Universe who was known for being, yeah, she won it and, you know, that's it. I wanted people to remember me for as long as I could. And I, and I realized that, you know, films is one way where I could live on forever. I mean, people could see me forever. Mm. Everything that, you know, you look into a career perspective and you decide which career mm. to take was in the film industry. So I joined it. So the way I see it, you've had a, a pretty normal middle class upbringing, right. and, uh, had a cantonment life. What set you apart from, from the average girl? If you come home, Simi, which I've invited you so many times, you must, <laughs> you'd see I'm still a very average girl. It's the, wor the way the world starts to perceive you differently, that you start to perceive yourself differently. It's only when I come out that I dress up and I put on makeup, and this is like a different side of me. And there, it's not that this average girl has changed. It's just that. The world has given her a different status. A an average girl can't win the Miss Universe. What quality made you win the Miss Universe? I think the quality that made me win the Miss Universe was that 
the belief for an average girl that she could try and be better than average. Very honestly, I think, other than my hard, hard, hard work and everything, the dash of luck that came my way, which I got a little luckier than the other women, I think made me win. And to me, I am not being modest. You should see the women there, what bodies, what faces, and the way they speak and present themselves. I think not better than you, Susmita. <laughs> no, no, they were very beautiful women. How much in control of your life are you? I mean, you're a woman of the 90s. I make my own decisions. I decide I want to do this, I do not want to do this. I decide how I wish to talk to this person or don't. I, as a woman, have my needs, mm -hmm. have my requirements out of things, out of people. Mm -hmm. I just know what I want and I know how to get it. And believe me, the world would be a better place if a woman decides what she wants for herself. Is social approval important to you? Not mm -hmm. all the time. I am known to be a so-called rebel <laughs> in that case. For me, my society is my parents. Okay. This is it. This is how I was born. That's my foundation. Yeah. And that's the way, that's on what my building is built. Do you think you intimidate men? Maybe some, but that's not the intention. But sometimes you do. What makes a man irresistible to you? Ooh. <laughs> what makes a man irresistible to me? His eyes. His conversation through his eyes. I know that the universe rated you a perfect 10. <laughs> but I want to know how you rate yourself on your looks. With my makeup or without my makeup? <laughs> That's the important question. Without my makeup, I'd say I'm a 5. With my makeup, I think I'm about 7.5. How do you rate your intelligence? Theoretical or practical? <laughs> you are <laughs> scientific <laughs> to me. <laughs> OK. Theoretical, I don't know. I'm not so much a, uh, uh, you know, IQ, IQ person who's into newspapers, knowing about current affairs. I'm not. You don't like read that. a lot. I teach I you kids. No, I, I'm the opposite. I love writing, okay. but I don't like to read that much. Okay. But uh, I like to read. You bring me Archie's and you bring me all this. I love to read. Really? But give me those fad books. I'll run like miles away from it. Theoretical, which is bookish knowledge, I'm very bad at. I can't even rate myself. I'm so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and practical knowledge, I'd give myself an eight. Your personality? A whole lot. At home or outside? Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> uh, I think at home a 10, and outside, I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. That you tell me. I think you're a perfect 10. No. That's I my opinion. I want to know yours. Listen, I'm going eight with everything, so let's go seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about sex appeal? Sex appeal. When I want to get sexy. Well, then we're talking a nine. Uh, <laughs> when I'm not feeling any such thing, we're talking a two. <laughs> Your killer instinct? Ten. Ten on ten? Ten on ten. That's the only thing that's got me so far. My killer instinct. I have too much of it. Luck factor. Oh, 100. <laughs> 100. <laughs> You've come just in time. We were just going to start talking about you. <laughs> 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 You've been born and brought up in this industry. Film wala. In that sense. My grandfather was Vijay Bhatt. The he director. The director, industry. producer. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the pioneers of the industry. My father's a cameraman. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a director. But how, how come you opted for direction? I like to be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> oh, well. On the set, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote Basta, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Uh, th that, that was your first film? Yes, that mm. yes. It was based on her as Miss Universe. Mm -hmm. That's right. Is that when you um, got fascinated with, with Sushmita and the idea of, of her? Do you know Francis? It's correct. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, actually, it was a film that I was supposed to direct, Basta. Then Mahesh Bhatt said to me one day, he said, you know, Sushmita Sen is interested in doing films. And it's a subject of yours. So can we like make it into a Miss Universe and the plan? 
So I said, yeah, we could try, you know, we could work things around. So they said, great, meet her at 3 o'clock in Naretto. I said, what? <laughs> I mean, like you just told me, it's like 2 o'clock and you want me to Naretto at 3. So you went and met her? So I went and met her, I don't know what I narrated to her. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been something good. <laughs> <laughs> I was just making it up in the car. I was like, no, this won't work, and this will work, and this won't work. <laughs> so something's got to work. So I went there and I met her. I narrated the script to her. She liked it. And that is so unromantic. <laughs> like, right now it's uh, an old affair, so things have started yeah. to kind of... <laughs> We're going home after this. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> I used to think it's the yeah. biggest snob in the whole world. I'm not going to say what I felt about it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Have that's to okay. I've been told. I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> and throughout hmm. the shooting, she used to always go complain to my cut. This one doesn't turn up on time. This one is wearing the wrong outfit. This one. So I used to think she used to change my dialogue. <laughs> Your dialogues were so bad. I can't believe it. <laughs> How can you say this? <laughs> I mean, one or two of them, <laughs> not <laughs> Okay, so. Uh, so when did the chemistry <laughs> begin? Uh, when I broke my little finger? No, when she starts saying lines, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, well, I broke my little finger, and then the next thing I know, my whole hand was swollen up. It was in a bad shape. So, you know, when you're in, in Seychelles, in a foreign place, and you don't know anybody other than your own unit, you can come to them and say, oh, what happened? And here's a man who I just couldn't stand, okay? And I you couldn't him. stand him? Couldn't stand him. This is towards the <laughs> end of the film. <laughs> but why? I just thought he had such a big problem with me. He doesn't even know me, and he goes on complaining about me to my director all the time. It was like he had something personal against me, you know? Hmm. Okay. He did. Not personal, but... Uh, what was it? Well, first, we used to change my lines. I was really upset about okay. that. Okay, <laughs> apart from that. Um, no, and I thought that, you know, she had an attitude. Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> what did you think after? Yeah. And yeah. Like, what do I think now? Yes. Yes, I Very want to important. know how the impression. I still came. think you have an attitude, but a good attitude. <laughs> <laughs> a good attitude. <laughs> no, I do have an attitude. But when it comes to Vikram, it goes double fold because he likes a woman with an attitude. That's what his problem is. So when he gets there, he's I like. I told that to her in a moment of weakness. <laughs> 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 and it was mm. still like we used to start talking and chatting and this and that. We ended up in an affair long after. This was just like the beginning of getting to be just friends with each other. Slow chemistry. Very slow chemistry. Very, very slow. When, when this whole thing began between the two of you, you were married, weren't you? Yes, at that point. Did you try Not when we started seeing each other, but uh, when we started before working together. Before the chemistry set in. Yeah, before the chemistry set in. The, the wife and him were not living together. And I cannot condemn a man, or I can't go around feeling guilty or make the person feel guilty if he had a bad marriage. Mm. And I have nothing against him or his family or his ex-wife or his daughter because um, some things just are never meant to be. Mm. And I don't feel guilty because I have done something very openly and with a very open conscience. I know that the man was in a divorce when I met him. Mm. And I wasn't going to wait to tell the world that I loved him just because he hadn't got through his divorce yet that I will wait for him to get through his divorce mm -hmm. and then tell people, okay, I'm going out with him. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that because my conscience was clear. So I went ahead and did exactly what I think was right. The yeah. rebel. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> what about you? Were you good? What, what, how were you dealing with it? You know, for me, uh, too many things happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think this whole situation has been misunderstood in a way. The thing is that, you know, even when you're in a bad marriage, or the marriage is not working, you're just hoping that it would. Mm. You know, you're trying all the time. I'm not too vocal. Mm. So I'm not the sort of a person who would like sit down and, you know, talk about things. Maybe things would have been different if I could, you know, be that sort of person, but I'm not. So I was, you know, into different forms of escapism, come home late, you know, mm. just, just, just try to avoid the situation and circumstances mm. as much as possible. And that's just postponing the problem, not solving it. And then one, one fine day I had to face up to it, you know. I don't blame my ex-wife, or I don't blame my parents, or I don't blame her parents, or I don't blame... It's just that it didn't work out, you know, and there's, you know, there's no, no, no point flogging a dead horse. The minute there's lack of communication, any relationship goes for a toss. Mm. Because there are things that are misunderstood. Things are misunderstood because they're not said properly. To make it work, you have to be very vocal about your feelings. Are you vocal about your feelings now? I'm getting. You're learning. I'm learning. That's one thing I have to give credit to Sushmita for. Yeah. She has, you know, she, she tells me, she, one day she just took me into the kitchen and said, here are all the plates, why don't we just break them? You know, they just, mm. just come out with it. 
and I think now uh, this past one year when I've been uh, finding a voice, so mm. to speak, <laughs> it's been much better. Do you see this relationship in the long term, or are you just taking it one day at a time? A day at a time? Yes. Because Can that be? Yes, I'll tell you why. Because tomorrow, you know, if we're married, we sit down and we do something together, or I do something. He shouldn't feel like this is not the woman I got married to. That is why it's important that while we're together, we know each other completely. And that's what we are in the process of. Today, you see, when you meet someone in the DGM, we're all very nice to each other. Slowly, the, the two sides of you yeah. starts to come out. It has started to come out between the two of us, but it's still going to take some more time. The day mm -hmm. I have that faith in him, the complete trust, the complete faith, that day I'll be ready to make a commitment and go ahead with it. Yeah, yeah, I am. Sushmita, I sense it. <laughs> Don't you feel that? I think she's used to it. Yeah, well, <laughs> taking for granted. <laughs> <laughs> no, <coughs> he's, um, one thing I know for a fact is that he loves me like this. And that everything comes with it. He does love me like this. Oh, what about you? I love him like mad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Between yeah. the two nutcases, you know, one is crazy, one is mad. No, I love him so much because I... I see myself extremely happy with it. I see myself so content. I can be in a room in my house for 48 hours, sat in one place, just playing pool with him, playing video games. And I could just be doing nothing, just mm. sitting. He's reading his book on the other side of the bed, and I'll be reading my book on the other side of the bed. We're not talking for hours. But we know there's something just there. That's called contentment. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Is. Yes. You don't need to go out. You don't need it's to. It's so to it's so uh, nice to be able to be silent. You, know, you don't have to talk. I mean, He's teaching me how to do that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I cannot stop talking. Sometimes we're like, driving in a car and the music is on. And we don't talk the whole journey. We just listen to music. Just listen to music. And we'll come home and we'll discuss. What were you thinking of when you were listening to music? <laughs> and he's like, I was thinking of this wonderful place, and I was thinking of these people, and I'm like, I was directing something in my mind. <laughs> so he's becoming an actor with my help, and I'm becoming, becoming a director. director. <laughs> <with it. laughs> Do you try and get into his mind? Well, there are times when I feel I'm already in his mind, mm -hmm. you know? It's like everything he's going to say, I say it before he does. Do you do it with there's no, a lot that's of scary, time. but that happens. That's yeah, that happens like quite a few times. Chemistry yeah. Tuned in. See, that's that's the part of the show chemistry. I mean, it took really long. Is Sushmita very different as a person, as you know her, to what the people think of her? Oh, yes. yes How? Yes, yes. She's very different. She can be very childish. She can be a brat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's the sort of person who can give you so much attention. So much attention that you feel good. You, know? you, 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 feel, uh, you, feel, you feel special. You feel wanted. You feel needed. You know? That's a lovely thing. You think? Absolutely. Here lives in her? Mm. No, Ooh. not really. Truly. You can't spend your life being insecure. Mm. You know, if it's got to happen, it's going to happen. At least we've built this relationship where we are honest with each other. Mm. You know, in which if ever the need arises for, for us to, like, you know, just part ways, we should be honest about it. You know? Because, and then it becomes such a, such a, Torture, such a morbid relationship in which you're frightened every mm. day. Oh, she's gone for an outdoor shoot now, and what's going to happen? Is Who's the hero? And is she going to flirt with him? Or is he going to flirt with her? That's such torture. And just don't think about it. I mean, I you, you should have that much faith. Or just call it off. Why live, live through that torture? Mm. What about you? You're very possessive, you told me. Yes, I think it would hurt a lot if I lost him. It would make a big difference to me, I think. If I lost him, I would like cry over it and sulk over it and probably feel bad about it for a very long time. It would make a difference to me. But as far as being insecure about losing him, 
I think that purity comes from within me, you know. Mm. But I've loved him so much, I can't find someone who can love him like that. Mm -hmm. So no. if he loses me, then he, it's his loss <laughs> because <laughs> of nothing else, but because I loved him like crazy. Mm. And I'm going to miss the way he loves me, so both ways. Does the possessiveness get to you ever? You must tell her that. When you give too much attention to someone I know and you know, how I react to it. Someone I know and you know. <laughs> Is it a you know how much you remember things, baby? <laughs> you can't fight with me here. Acha. <laughs> That's it, baby. Let's let's go home now. <laughs> no, in, 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 the, in the sense, you know, uh, he is the sort of person. So, right. so there's a guy at home, and she would say, "Why don't you stay for dinner?" And <laughs> I would be like, "Yeah, sure. Why don't you stay for dinner?" <laughs> but if there's a girl over, and if I would say, "Why don't you stay for dinner?" She would say, yeah, why don't you stay for dinner? And then later on she goes, why did you ask her to stay for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> like, Didn't you just ask the guy yesterday to stay for dinner? I thought it's the done thing, you know? Oh. She'd be like, I will do it. You don't do it. Oh. Okay? And I'm like, sure? No, no, I don't do it with <laughs> everybody. I do it only when I see he has some special interest or a keen eye. On someone's special event. interest. Aren't you going to tell me this whisper? <laughs> 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 I, I, I think the mic's got it. Hey, listen, has the mic <laughs> no, 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 no. If no. it has, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Please be sure to ask me to stay for this and make them I've had it. <laughs> no, 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 think a little before you say something. So I say in Hindi, you know, I say that I'm thinking about it, but I'm thinking about it. So I said you should not do that. But other than that, I don't know, I'm really happy. That's it. Oh, that's Thank God. God. That's good. I agree. <laughs> but um, tell me, do you have a placid sort of relationship or is it very turbulent and jhagda? No, no, we have jhagdas. We have jhagdas. We have jhagdas. We have makeup. Uh, we have great jhagdas. Great jhagda. Jhagdas are like huge. Dolby Every time we have a jhagda, I throw. Finish. Oh, it's the end. It's, it's the, the end. end. Every time we have a fight, oh. it's the end. Khatam. Yeah, okay, bye. You see you. Don't ended you. so many it. times. It's over. And the next thing, it's like, I'm getting blank calls on my phone call. He's getting blank calls on his phone. And then the two of us are like, did he just call me? Who, me? <laughs> you must be kidding. Next time he calls and he says, it was your call, wasn't it? Where we come back home? <laughs> <laughs> Where we come back? <laughs> <laughs> He's such a gifted cab. He goes on and it's so do you, dear. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Who Your wins? Who wins? Most of the time, more. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but most of the time. Okay, you tell me, what's it like being the closest companion, the love of the most beautiful woman in the universe? <gasps> That's a tough question. You have 20 seconds in the front. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's like when I'm with her and you know all these guys come for autographs and when they have this starry look in their eyes mm. and they look at her and it makes me feel so proud you know, it makes me feel so happy that I have this person in my life who so many else would give theirs to have you know, mm. and it makes me feel really good. So sweet. <laughs> well I wish you both an enchanted life. Mm. Uh, love happiness. Thank, Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.